I went back to England for the first time in four and a half years since moving to Canada in 2019. It has been such a long time since I was able to get back home. And in fact, the plan was to move to Canada and then after we had gotten married in 2020, we were supposed to celebrate the second half of our wedding in the UK. But obviously plans completely changed, not just for us, but worldwide. So this trip was a long time coming and I was completely, completely anxious about it. I was both excited, anxious, worried that my homesickness would come back and that once I'd landed in the UK that I didn't want to come back to Canada, but I was quite pleasantly surprised during my trip. I didn't have anything to worry about. The only thing I did need to focus on besides introducing my husband to amazing food that we have and getting him in and around the city and around other parts of the UK, it was wanting to try and document as much as I could, but at the same time, just spending time to just sit and write. Writing is something that's obviously very passionate for me as a published essayist and poet. So that was definitely one hobby or special interest that I wanted to continue doing. So here I am at the airport trying to write, but also being utterly aware of being perceived. <laughs> so I was writing here, getting somewhat stressed out, but I was also extremely tired because it was like 10 o'clock at night and I am I am not a nighttime person by any means. <laughs> I was getting a little frustrated with a chapter that I was working on. I'm just even thinking about it now, months later, it still stresses me out. <laughs> but I've been working on a couple of projects that have just been really frustrating. I've had to remove entire chapters and move them into separate files like elsewhere so I can't get to them right away or as easily and rewriting and reworking other chapters completely because I've just hit a point where the plot is just going in a way that I just, mm, I don't even wanna talk about it right now. I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna save that for another day. <laughs> but basically, um, for those of you who probably are already aware, I've been working on a urban fantasy series for quite some time, for quite a while now. Um, and it's just, it's getting better guys. It's getting better, but it's just, it's stressing me out. So I pulled out my book instead. This was already like close to 11 p.m. at night. I was tired. I just needed to read a little bit of smut just to maybe try and wake me up for the rest of however long we were sitting in that room for, waiting for our flight to sort of like start up. But I lasted about 10 minutes and I had to give up. <laughs> I wanted to show my husband Costa Coffee because in my mind, Costa Coffee to the UK is what second cup is to Toronto. I don't know about the rest of Canada because I haven't been around Canada yet, but Toronto. So this was our version of Second Cup. We were just commenting on the fact that here, compared to Canada or at least Toronto, you don't have right of way. So when you're crossing the street here, you have to be smart. You've got to wait for the car to come in, stop, and then you walk behind after you've checked behind you to make sure there isn't a car coming in from behind. And so <laughs> it's just kind of funny and also kind of cute having to pull my husband back and be like no 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 babe we, no you gotta wait a minute hold on hold on or other times I have to like grab his hand like no 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 wait 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 <laughs> it's just it's kind of cute <laughs> oh my god it's too funny oh my god today is hot and I'm dressed like it's autumn and I'm dying but anyway I'm getting a lot of ideas for, you know, little conversations and quips between an international couple. So, it's fun. <laughs> this whole fit just ain't it, man. It is, oh my God, it's too hot. So we're going home and we're changing because I am not gonna survive this walk. <laughs> Just a side note, uh, Canada geese, when they come to the UK, or at least in my opinion, they're always on their best behavior. It's cute. After a few days in the UK, just trying to rest, recoup, 
adjust our minds to the new time changes and everything. Uh, we met up with my brother, one of my siblings, and we went out for dinner to Wagamama's. Wagamama's is probably one of my favorite nationwide chain restaurants in the UK. And I keep saying it even now, especially now that my husband understands how much I really, really, really need Wagamama's to open up in Canada. I think from a business perspective, Wagamama will do amazing in Canada. For those of you who don't know, Wagamama's is Japanese cuisine. Um, you get to see the food being cooked in the kitchen. It's it's a whole vibe. It's, it's gorgeous, okay? I used to work at this train station over on the King's Cross side. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. But this particular day, we had an appointment just after lunchtime. And so we had most of the morning to just kind of get around. I wanted to show my husband a few things before we got to our appointment. Um, and one of those things happened to be the Atlantis Bookshop. For those of you who don't know, the Atlantis Bookshop is one of London's oldest occult and alternative spirituality bookstores where you can find pretty much anything, whether it's tons and tons and tons of history, books, tarot cards, oracle decks, a few sacred items that you might need for your altar space or your occult room. There's also a museum downstairs in their basement that is also open to the public. You can pretty much find absolutely anything in the store. It also helps that the store owner is incredibly knowledgeable. Then we went off to our appointment, which was to see my favorite play, Macbeth, at the Globe Theatre. Of course, you can't film or take photos in the theatre, but I was a little sneaky sneaky. And then I got my husband over onto the bridge so that he could see a little bit more of the South Bank, which he actually enjoyed. This is a copy of Hamnet that I picked up while I was there at the Globe because it's a book I haven't yet read and I just needed to. And I also spent quite a bit of money in the gift shop. So, Listen, I'm trying to make memories and buying lots of Shakespeare stuff is how I do it, okay? That's it, thank you. It's okay, you can, you can stop there. You can stop there. You can stop there, yeah. Okay. You can stop now, Oh my god, okay. I have just found a whole bunch of CDs. So, this is how old I am. You probably can't see me very well. Um, but I had, this is a small one. This one I would just throw into my bag. This was back in the day when we all had like CD players. And we, if you couldn't afford a CD from the music store, you would get your friends to burn you copies of their CDs. This is before they started putting that weird like digital thing on CDs so you couldn't burn them anymore and copy them and stuff. Um, and of course, most people back then, this is like the very early 2000s, most people back then would just download their music from particular websites. Um, and then you could just make like playlists and then burn them to CDs. I have a ton. This is just a really tiny amount, but I have a ton of these. <laughs> just cringing at the thought of looking at them. So I'm just going to show you a few of what I was carrying in this oh so important wallet that I would keep in my bag. Oh my god. I just showed some of these to my husband. I just, I haven't stopped cringing. <laughs> um, oh my god. I don't even know what's even on on half of these anymore. Um, Shazzy's Mix Rock and Roll Yeah. So it's probably like Nickelback, Rammstein, System of a Down, you name it, probably on this one. Corn. <laughs> Oh my god, corn. <laughs> I've got corn. <laughs> I I ended up buying physical copies of a lot of these albums later on, once I'd like set up my first ever Amazon account and stuff. But at that point, it was like that was the only way you could get your hands on like really big American bands. Um, I still sometimes check in with Metal Hammer magazine. But again, back in the day, at least up until... This was like the last one from like 2006 that I ever got. And I remember this one. Um, this had like a track on Trivium, uh, sorry, a track by Trivium on it. But Metal Hammer and a few other magazines would often give you um, like their own little like playlist, like mixes. So you could listen to fresh new music from a lot of these metal bands. Um, 
before you would basically start hearing them more mainstream anywhere else. So it was kind of fun. So it's actually nice. I still have this, like the memories, the angst, the err. Uh, but yeah, Metal Hammer. Oh my God. Shazzy songs. Totally awesome. Five stars. Cannot remember for the life of me what's on here. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think it might've been this playlist that I had created. Um, I'm pretty sure that one of these was, there was like a whole, tr like, I want to say like 20, 25 minute track that a friend of a friend had made for me where he kind of remixed together like Black Sabbath with hip hop from like the early 90s and early 80s, late 80s. Um, and it just made this like, it made this sound that was just tight. <laughs> it was tight. Um, so yeah, it's on one of those two CDs and I, as much as I loved it, I'm, it's, it's time to let it go. Um, I don't even know what this says. I'm pretty sure that says, pretty sure it says cool tracks inspired by Jay. Jay was someone I was friends with and I can't remember which Jay it was. Cause there were quite a few people in like this friend group. Well, there was a couple of friend groups that kind of overlapped and I tended to follow people, like different people each week. I didn't really have friends of my own. Um, but a lot of people within those groups were either really fashionable or they had like a really cool taste in music. So I tried to emulate that in my own way and failed miserably. So yeah, some tracks inspired by whoever the hell Jay was. Oh my God. More corn. Creed. <laughs> oh, I've got a PlayStation game in here. <laughs> Random. Uh, oh, more corn. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to show you all of them. Uh, Muse. Didn't really play that one as often because um, I actually had the physical copy of this album, which is The Origin of Sy um, Symmetry. Um, so I was like, okay, I didn't really play that one. And of course, American Pie 2. So ah, this has been a very strange trip. Like the nostalgia that comes from these is a good thing, but it's also I'm at a point where I'm like, no, it's definitely time I can just get rid of these. But at the same time, there's a lot of other stuff, especially the fashion that I look back at and I'm like, why did I think that was fashionable? <laughs> why did I think that was OK? And it makes me now wonder, um, like today, like how much of my fashion choices are going to be OK for me to continue wearing like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, which is why I like to try and go for things that are fairly minimal and kind of plain. But. Yeah, I've got a bit of a head cold and that's part of the reason why you're only seeing half of my face. But this is now empty. I'm going to give it to my aunt so she can put all of her lovely Christian music into it. And I'm just going to quickly read up on how I can destroy these and get rid of them so that they don't continue taking up space. So, um, yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. It had been exactly one week by this point. We'd celebrated my sister's birthday. We'd gone to the Globe. We'd gone to various other places. We'd basically been going out to dinner almost every single night at some point, somewhere, trying some sort of cuisine. Or not me necessarily trying, because obviously I knew these places, but for my husband to be trying these things and getting out of his comfort zone. And it had been a lot of fun. I didn't have to worry anymore about any anxieties that I had surrounding homesickness or anything because within two or three days of being back in the UK, as much as I love it, I needed to be back in Toronto. I was tired. <laughs> I wanted to go home and we still had another week to go. <laughs> so we know for sure and definitely for the future when we come out to the UK, hopefully every year or so to at least spend more time with my aunt as she continues to age, a week will be more than enough time for us but it also meant that during this time on the down moments or these quiet times that I was able to get I would sit down with my laptop and I would sit and work on my own whips and have a lot of fun with that and then my husband would also pull out his laptop and work on his whips as well I don't think I'm allowed to talk about what my husband is working on at the moment or at least on this channel um, but yeah it was a very productive time a very productive week but we also had a little bit of fun. But like I said, we still have a week to go, so stay tuned. <laughs>